welcome to Another Bite, where we rewatch the most innovative and intriguing pitches from Shark Tank. I'm Jory, and I'm joined by Ariel. Hey, everyone. And John. Hey, everybody. John, Ariel, when's the last time you had a bad hair day? Was it at the office, at the gym, at a birthday party or special event? Well, with today's product, those nightmare-inducing bad hair days are a thing of the past. Here comes trouble. But before we split (laughs) hairs on how effective this product is or if it's enough to secure a Shark Tank deal, here's an ad. That's right. Here you go. You know it. We know it. Next year is creeping up quick. If you want to win inside your niche in 2024, you need tech that puts you in the pilot seat. The new HubSpot Sales Hub will help you close out the year strong and kickstart your success in 2024. Teams can collaborate on every inch of the customer journey and keep operations running smoothly with comprehensive prospecting workspace and powerful sales analytics tools that keep data connected across teams. And with over 1,400 integrations, there's a ton of ways to mix in new features. So finish out Q4 strong and gear up for the new year with HubSpot Sales Hub. Learn more at HubSpot.com forward slash sales. So today in the tank, we have the Cup Buddy. And the Cup Buddy is brought to us by Joshua, who is asking for $300,000 for 10% in his business, which is a $3 million valuation. Now, his product, the Cup Buddy, is trying to solve the ultimate problem that cutting your own hair, or in some cases, your own beard, can be a total nightmare if you don't know what you're doing. But it doesn't have to be, because using the Cut Buddy, which is a multi-curve hair grooming set of stencils, sort of like guiding equipment, this product promises that no matter what you're trying to cut on your head, it's gonna look good regardless of your head shape or size, which is a bold claim, because not all of us have very normally shaped heads, can confirm. So thinking about our product, our founder, and our pitch, initial thoughts of the cut, buddy. I love this guy. He came out and he had strong credibility to begin with. He had a very good pitch Mm -hmm. where somebody accidentally messed up their hairline by buzzing their own hair. He had his numbers together. He had it all figured out. And then he pulled out an invention book. And he's Mm -hmm. like, here's the first drawing of this cut buddy back in the day. And I was like, I want an invention book. What's wrong with me? Nothing's stopping you. Yeah. I like this guy. Start today. Yeah. I'm going to start today. I don't know what I'm going to invent, but I'm going to invent something, everybody. And when I do, I'll put it in the invention book. (laughs) It's going to be an invention scrap of paper, (laughs) probably. Anyway, I have cut my own hair like many of us did during COVID. My wife has cut my hair during COVID. I also have accidentally shaved my beard off (gasps) because I had the wrong attachment on. It's the morning on a Monday morning after a weekend, and I went to trim my beard before I went to work, and I literally just shaved a big swath of my beard off. And so I relate (laughs) to to the problem. I've (laughs) had this problem. I showed up at work, and people were stunned, and I wanted to play it off as though like I had like made a stylistic change, and like this is the new job. On, but in reality, I <laughs> told people the truth, which is my roommate dropped my beard trimmer in the <laughs> toilet and the <laughs> attachment fell off and he refused to get it out. So anyway, I relate to this product. I'm into it. Yeah. No, I, I love just the design of the product. Like it's essentially just like a protractor for your face. Mm-hmm. This was a one segment that I was really intrigued because it came out in like, what, 2017. I'm very curious to see how well it did in 2020 when things closed down. Like I could only see that population rising of folks that yeah. learn more about the product and that awareness. But overall, like anytime you can make a piece of plastic work and market it (laughs) Mm -hmm. and have amazing margins, again, like moves, I am 100% in. Yeah. I mean, anytime you can sell almost a million dollars worth of plastic Plastic. at a 72% net margin, you're doing pretty well for yourself. This is good. This is good stuff. And Ariel, the biggest question I had is how many people are actually going to buy it? And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, COVID, this thing must have exploded because everyone must have been like, I need help cutting my hair because there were a lot of bad haircuts given during COVID. It's doing really well. As you mentioned, it's got, I think it was like $700,000 of sales in 2016. But one thing that was really interesting about how this product really took off is the founder mentions that they leaned really heavily into affiliate marketing, which I don't think we've heard a lot on the Shark Tank. We talk a lot about influencer marketing and potentially like the virality of certain products. But Ariel, could you 
unpack what that means and like why that might have lended itself to the success of this product? Influencer marketing, you're leveraging a company or an influencer's audience already. You're really focused on how are you driving influence over a longer term, whereas affiliate marketing is something that essentially you're able to optimize pretty quickly when you look at things like your sales per affiliate, which is essentially the volume per each of your channels, conversion rates. You look at things like your lifetime value for your customers that come from specific affiliates. So it really is a great way to tap into an existing network that you may not already have. The Cut Buddy in this instance didn't have a lot of brand awareness. So by partnering on with some of these other companies and partners that are incentivized to promote this product, it's a really great way to get that awareness out there. And there's so many levers in terms of a data perspective that you can tweak and make changes to and see those optimizations more in real time compared to influencer marketing where you're working together on content that you're hoping kind of shifts narratives and perceptions like over time, which is a little more difficult to measure and optimize. Yeah. To summarize what you just said, Ariel, influencer marketing is using someone who is popular for brand marketing Mm -hmm. and affiliate marketing is using someone who is popular to do direct response and sell specific products. It was going viral on Facebook. So on one side, you have affiliate marketing, which may or may not have a lifespan issue to consider. But then you have this idea of maintaining virality and like keeping the momentum going. Could we introduce a new segment? Yes, always. Would you be okay to introduce a new segment? Yeah. Because the biggest question I have about this company is how many can they actually sell? Mm-hmm. Because this is a pretty low-priced product. He's selling it for 15 bucks. It's a low-priced product. And there's great margins on it, by the way. But this whole thing and whether you should invest in it is going to kind of boil down to like, How many can you sell? Can you sell it? (laughs) This is targeted at men, I think. Mostly targeted at men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm asking you both because I don't want to insult you if you're like, I actually want the cut buddy. I think it is at its current state targeted at men. I feel like eyebrow stencils and like mascara Mm. stencils and things could be easily incorporated to the product line. But that is also not the exact product he's pitching right now. All right. 100 million adult men in the US. So that's the starting point. What percent have beards? Does anybody know? And let's say it's a beard product. Is this like theoretical or are you like actually asking for numbers? No, I'm asking. 15%. Low ballin. Oh my God. <laughs> so I found I a bunch of research. That. One in three. Okay. okay. So we're basically saying there's 30 million Tam. men mm-hmm. that you could potentially sell this to. Sure. Do you think this is like a winner takes all market or do you think people are buying tons of crap? Very competitive. Yeah, they did bring that up. I think most men with beards and worries about their hairline are going to a barber yeah. to shape things. I don't think a lot of people are trying to like, I'll figure this out by myself. So my sense in this product is it's not going to be like everyone who has a beard is going to buy one of these. I think they've got a lot of options trying to figure out how they solve their problem. A lot of people are going to go to barber's jewelry. I think there's just like a lot of alternatives out there. But not everyone can afford to go to the barber either for upkeep. Yeah, totally. Some are going to trust the stencil. (laughs) What about product market fit? You think it's a vitamin or a painkiller? I think it's a painkiller. I think that it's like meant to solve a problem rather than make something feel better. I see it more as a vitamin. I think it's a vitamin. It could be both, I suppose. Yeah, like it could be a mixture. I mean, it's a painkiller when you shave your beard off accidentally, <laughs> but I think it's actually right. a vitamin for most people. And honestly, <laughs> I think that's the market. I feel like their entire marketing strategy is fear, though. It is a fear-based marketing strategy. Yeah. Their entire pitch was that someone shaved off the side of their sideburn wrong. And to me, that's like, okay, so the painkiller is that you don't want to be embarrassed by a crappy haircut ever again. Okay, I see it. And then likelihood of virality. What do you think? It's already gone viral a little bit. You think this can be like an ongoing virality thing? I don't think it's a repeat viral. I could see Mm -hmm. it being a TikTok trend where girlfriends try to cut, like Mm, the trend where like girls were doing their boyfriend's makeups. Like I could Mm. see it also being a similar kind of thing. So I'm hearing basically fragmented market. Yeah. Plus it's kind of a vitamin. So it's going to be hard to get market penetration, maybe some virality on it, but jewelry's medium on it. So I figure you could get like maybe 1%. Maybe you can get 1% of your market, which would be pretty good if you could capture 1% of the 30 million men out there. That would basically be 300,000 sold, which would work out based on what he makes on wholesale between like two and a half and three and a half million dollars. So that's my rough estimate based on how you all sized the market. That's how many we could sell. Yeah. Which his valuation is only at three million. So, <laughs> so it's kind it's of there. in the ballpark. Yeah. It kind of yeah, checks right out, there. right? Yeah. yeah. Math, maths. Well- You're not the only one that thinks that the math is mathing because Damon stepped in and was like, here's $300,000 for 20% of your business. 
So ultimately, a deal was made with Damon for $300,000 for 20% because the math was mathing. This founder walked away with the Shark Tank deal. It's amazing. And to prove that the math continued to math. <laughs> This is a segment from 2017, but the company very much still exists because the product was ultimately licensed by a large hair care company, mm. Andis. But you can actually find these cut buddies everywhere. Walmart, Target, TJ Maxx, Burlington, and mm. more all sell the cut buddy. So as of November 2022, they are approaching an annual revenue of $3 million. Ooh, $3 million on the money, everybody. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now predict the stock market. They John, are quickly. doing that market. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Can you just for a minute appreciate the fact that if you spent your whole life putting down inventions in an invention book. In your little and folder. Then one day you actually made one of them come to life and then it was all over the country and all these stores Surreal. and you're doing millions in revenue. I think that's incredible. What a great story. Today's episode was written and produced by the mythical Matthew Brown. Additional support comes from Melanie Romero and editing from Robert Hartwig. If you're a fan of the show, meh, even if you're not a fan of the show, tell a friend. Word of mouth is the best way to support the show. That does it for me. We'll see you next episode here in the tank for another bite.